I think we can start. I think they're having technical difficulties at the back, but I think we can start. Thanks, okay, everybody. Great. great to be in studio. Um, like I said, my name is Carol Abade. I'm the group CEO for EXP. I'm currently dialing in from Johannesburg. And I'll hand over to Adal first. Yeah. Ooh, okay, great. <laughs> There's just a technical hiccup. Carol, thanks, thanks for, for, for doing this. Um, I, I am Ada, pleasure to meet you. Um, I'm calling in from Lagos, Nigeria. I run a business in the food space. I have a chain of restaurants and a juice product focused on local sourcing from our farmers right here in Nigeria. Um, I'm also an angel investor, so I get to see a number of um, startups across different sectors. Um, and it's really exciting what's going on right now in, in, in Africa. Great to be here. Okay, I think we'll, we'll just carry on as Adi is trying to get his uh, sound sorted out um, because we are live. <laughs> so the first thing is let's clear the MBA story because everybody's been asking, how can you say the MBA is useless? So I think there's a caveat on this one. The question should be, do you need an MBA to succeed as an entrepreneur? And my answer is absolutely not. And I feel that there are some things for which an MBA is valuable. And there are some things that an MBA is lacking in order to be able to be sufficiently, um, I suppose, to, in totality for all entrepreneurs, not just African entrepreneurs. But I think most specifically, there are very specific challenges in the African continent that the MBA doesn't always cover. What's your view? You know, there, absolutely, you know, but there are many things that are good about an MBA. Um, you know, obviously, it just really gives you a, the level of confidence um, to think, you know, that you can just go conquer the world. Um, but in the context of Africa, when you do try to conquer Africa, you're, you're very quickly um, eating humble pie. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it is, it is an interesting one because I didn't even think I was going to be an entrepreneur while I was doing my MBA. So I wasn't necessarily taking the classes for that. I did do a few classes, but not like, um, uh, um full on. Um, but when I did decide to become an entrepreneur, I'm trying to bring out all my notes from school and reading this framework that this is how it should work. And I tried to, to do it immediately in my business and things maybe backfire. Um, yeah, there definitely is the Africa context. There definitely is a unique um, creativity of, of thought that African entrepreneurs must have to deal with the things that come your way. You know, I'm sure you, you feel the same way, Carol. Exactly. In fact, I think the question most entrepreneurs or people wanting to go to business school must ask themselves at this point is what is the most valuable knowledge that I need to yes. become a successful entrepreneur. If you can tick that box on the most valuable knowledge you need, then go get that knowledge. And yes. that knowledge isn't always in the form of... Uh-huh, exactly. So it's not yeah. useless. Let's just say all of you who've got MBAs, fantastic. We love having you. Um, it comes with a huge amount of skill, discipline, yeah. and uh, competency. But now let's go back to entrepreneurship in Africa um, and share some experiences around what do you think are some of the most important skills that an entrepreneur operating in the continent needs to seriously consider? Yeah. You know, Carol, I think I mentioned earlier on that creativity of thought. I think that's the first thing I would, I would throw out there. You know, you just really have to think about the context we're operating in and the things you learn in those case studies that are usually predominantly case studies from other parts of the world and not always Africa-based case studies, you know, when you, you come back um, to operate, you just have to be very creative um, about thinking of how to adapt it to the context where we are, we operate in. I think the second thing, you know, you hear it a lot for when they talk about entrepreneurs in Africa is that resilience. You know, it is so, so true. Um, you know, I think you guys, a few people have heard about the story of when um, my first store that was opened um, in Lagos, you know, the bustling city of over 20 million people. Um, we were hiring young people. We were all talking about agriculture and food as the, as the, as the, uh, as the future of, of Nigeria, of Africa. Um, and I'm a woman. We were talking about gender and empowering women. And I was a woman um, 
being empowered through my business and yet and yet you had a government that came one day with bulldozers and said oh your landlord didn't have permission and you're like what the heck and they raise it to the ground wow. literally rubbles literally rubbles that was my first store we were only two weeks old um it was like the place to be people were talk talking about it there was a buzz you know and i know how i suffered really carol i was sitting there wow. every day with the carpenters and the electricians trying to get that place open pumping money in all my savings and in two weeks the government of a country could do that um the low the the the, the state government and so that's not something that you would <laughs> you would ever even hear about in an MBA class. You know, that's not something that they're preparing you for um, in terms of, 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 of being an entrepreneur, going out there to conquer, as I mentioned, and thinking through all these scenarios. Scenario planning in that case would never have had the fact that the government of the country will come bulldoze your store. So, you know, that, yeah. resilience, that resilience continues to be paramount um, as I think about African entrepreneurs, just be ready to take those hits and punches and pick yourself up and keep going because that remains the opportunity. That's fantastic. And I think we'll come back to how you got through that story. But Ade is here with us. Thank you for getting that fixed. Um, I think we'll take you a little bit backwards. Ade, tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're dialing in from. Thank, thanks, Carol. Ade, nice, nice to meet you guys. I'm very happy to be on the panel with you. So. Uh, I'm from Benin. I, I founded Ridecom nearly 10 years ago. Uh, Ridecom is a technology company. We build software for um, customer experience management issues that you know most businesses in the world and especially in Africa face. Um, and then we also support business through our customer, our professional services around customer service and experience management. So most of what we do is uh, providing a system and solutions such as uh, feedback and and um, um, customer uh, customer interaction uh, m m management, uh, customer service software, and um, we've learned the hard way, you know, of how doing business in Africa can be completely different. What you know, what you learn in an MBA classroom. So yeah, I'll be very happy to share with you guys. Uh, uh, what what I've been through the last ten years, and and then how we managed to overcome those different challenges. Okay, so was your MBA useless? Uh, of course, my MBA was useless uh, 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 because. <laughs> 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 uh, listen, let let, let 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 me put it that way. Uh, <laughs> you spent all that money. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> the MBA was useless because, you know, when you want to swim, mm. uh, um, when you want to learn to swim, they put you in water, right? That's how you learn to swim. And so uh, my, my MBA was sort of learning swimming out of the water. <laughs> <laughs> right. And then, then they jump in the water right after that. Make the MBA streetwise. We've, we've got to exactly. bring it back to... That's when you learn how the system works. You have to be on the ground. I think we lost you a little bit. Are you still there? Yes. And Ade is here. It's confusing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm here. I'm here. So you have to be on the ground, basically. You have to learn uh, how to build and run a business by doing it, not in the classroom, uh, because there's a, there is a difference between what you learn in the classroom and then what you experience. Yeah, I think it's a bit slow, but no, Ade, I completely agree with you. Um, I, I still remember sitting there and and doing. I, I, I just can't, I'm thinking about some of even the the the, the context and 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 those cases I mentioned it mm -hmm. earlier that we need yeah. a lot more cases that are from young entrepreneurs on the continent um, that are being shared in business schools, um, not just in Africa but across the world, um, so that we really get those true stories and give a flavor. For, for what it's like. Yeah, yeah, I Do you think definitely agree. It's just sometimes it's too painful for somebody mm -hmm. to actually relieve that story. And so those stories don't get told as case studies because I can imagine, <laughs> Ada, if you had to start writing a book about 
that two week experience and relieving it all over again, you know, yes. could that be a reason why we're not seeing enough of these experiences? Uh, no, I, I think we need to relive it. Um, about two years ago, the, my business school, the Kellogg School of Management, actually did a little a, a mini case study on on that experience. Um, but the class was a specific class. It was a a class on doing business in emerging markets. So it was it was just tailored to telling those sort of um, stories of what it's like, which I think is fantastic. It's a new class. So as long as we can get more business schools um, again across Africa and 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 the rest of the world um, telling these stories as difficult as it might be. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, so what pulled yeah. you out? How, how did you get out of it? So in my case, um, you know, Toya, before you, um, Ade, before you came, I was telling the story of when my store was um, bulldozed and, and what pulled me out of it, you know, I still, you know, the founder of Reach, um, JR, who, who's a friend of mine, I still remember him coming because the thing happened, the incident happened the day before my birthday and he came with a little cake on my birthday um, to, to just get me out of get me out of the rot, out of the depression, out of the sadness I was, I was going through. So, so I think the love from friends and family, um, but more so the love from our customers. Um, technology is amazing. You, you have people who heard the story, who saw the video of that bulldozer going into the store, and they set up a website, a giving website, you know, donate to Newly. Um, friends of Newly and and people rallied around um, just because we were able to to have you know not just the website set up but even a payments platform for people to send money through. So I think um, the fact that we had so much love, um, so much um, care, and people rallying around us and understanding the plight of of an entrepreneur operating in such an environment. I think that helped and, and that helped to pull me out. That helped me to, you know, that, that resilience I spoke about earlier on to just get up again. We started from my kitchen. We started doing orders and, and sending things out and until, until we were able to get back on our feet. Wow. That's, that's, it's, it's such an inspiration to hear that because I think you raised two things that also resonate with me. The idea that within, I think, um, the entrepreneurship circle in the continent, the one thing that really stands out is the amount of help that's available from strangers. Um, people you don't know, you, you can call on to and say, hey, my name is so-and-so, I'd like to come talk to you. And yeah. you'd get a meeting, you know, you, 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 you'd get a response to an email. I think that's such a powerful part yeah. of our continent. Yes. Um, the network that we build that you can call on to. Mm -hmm. And I found that experience a lot as I was operating and, and opening up businesses across the continent is I would just show up in a country with a list of names and numbers from people. Say, well, call so-and-so. So-and-so doesn't know me from a bar of soap. Yeah. And I'd say, hey, this is who I am. I got your number from a day and I'm in town. And they'd meet up with me and they opened so many doors for me. And I'm forever grateful for those sort of connections. I, I, I struggle to imagine that this is possible outside of Africa. I am sure there are people with exception stories, but I think in Africa, it's something we can always tap into and encourage young people starting to run a business to call on to the people like you who've had that experience because it's there. Yeah. 